Before we started this journey, we have to go on several fighting. Can you even imagine that we are stuck in this desert for four and four, five hours? We don't know the situation we are. We don't have what our money has been. Can you even imagine? And they said they 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 buy they they buy good time and they said they are not moving their bus. They said they are not moving their bus because they don't give them money. Which time I'm watching to do this one? Look at this. We don't even have compass. We don't know where we are. don't know the place we are. Everything has finished. We are done. We don't have anything. We don't have anything. We don't have compass. We don't have compass. We don't have compass. We don't have our location. We are in an unknown environment with a very big danger. Look at this place. All those things. According to a new source, the evacuation of 2,400 students and other Nigerians trapped by the ongoing conflict in Sudan took off on a slow start on Wednesday as only 15 out of the 40 buses required for the exercise were provided. Although the federal government hired 40 buses for the repatriation of the citizens from Khartoum and other citizens to Cairo, Egypt, only 10 buses were available as of Wednesday morning, while additional 5 buses were provided later in the day. This was happening as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, claimed that the federal government had been charged $1.2 million for the evacuation of Nigerian nationals out of Sudan. He cited insecurity in Sudan for the high cost of evacuating <laughs> Nigerians from Sudan. We are worried about the Nigerians in Sudan and what the government is going to do to um, ensure their safety. And we are asking, what is the state of the safety of Nigerians trying to evacuate Sudan? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You could also tweet to us at WishoAfrica1 with the hashtag Wisho. You know, I chuckled when I read or when I was talking about um, the 1.2 1 .2 million dollars because, so first of all, they are Nigerians. All you see is money. <laughs> <laughs> no, all you hear is money. It's a large amount of money. <laughs> when I heard that, I just went to my calculator and I'm like, okay, so 1.2 million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's even with that. No, we're not even doing black market rates. And I'm like, okay. And you provided only 15 buses. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, these drivers. Now, I don't know if these drivers are locals or if they are Nigerians or wherever it is they're from. They had the guts to stop in an unknown, in the middle of nowhere, like Corey the Cowley Dog would say. You are there dropping people that, or rather stopping people that. So how are we so sure that there wasn't even something that was even, would I say, planned mm -hmm. in the first place? Like, all of these things don't just, it doesn't make sense. I said at the beginning, I have mixed feelings about this because in the first place, yeah, who sent you guys? But also, I feel like the government has a responsibility to its citizens, right? So in cases like this, because look at other countries and what other countries, I'm sure as we get on the conversation, we're going to, have, we're going to talk about this, what other countries are doing. So why is it that it's always different when it comes to Nigeria? Why is our case always different? Mm. Okay, so... <laughs> what did you say? Is it different? Mm. Is it different? I mean... Mm. I, I, first of all, I mean, I just I want to echo, look, Nigeria is bad, Nigeria is bad, but mm -hmm. when it kicks off somewhere else, where do you want to go? You want to come back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So the fact is, right, um, there's a sense of entitlement yeah. that Nigerians have, first and foremost. You know, you're standing in that video, you're laying, our money is finished, our this is this, and <laughs> my first question is, how did you get there in the first place? When you were going, did you seek the government's permission? Did you tell, like, literally, the government, I mean, it's like somebody having a baby and then coming the baby to your doorstep and say, feed my baby. Like, mm. when you were having sex, was I there? Was mm. I present? Did you consult me? Mm. So, you've gone to this place, and yes, um, <laughs> my son was very proud yesterday. He said, Mommy, I learned about the government today in school, and I said, what does the government do? He said, the government is responsible for the safety and security of its citizens. Yeah, Great. Right. <laughs> now, government is responsible for the safety and security of its citizens, right? And there is an expectation that, yes, when I'm abroad, my government will look after me. Yeah. Your government is the government of Nigeria. We have not looked after the 200 million Nigerians <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> then we got to worry extra about you that has chosen to walk with your two feet to another country. Mm. But these things happen, right? So you are there. And the government starts to make plans. Again, we have very high expectations. $1.2 million is actually not a lot of not money for money an evacu basic. evacuation yeah. exercise of this sort. Yeah. For the countries that really plan it, yeah. it takes sometimes as much as 1,200 military personnel mm -hmm. to get people out of yeah. the country. Yeah. 
Now, for some context, because again, Nigeria is so rubbish that people like to see. Most other countries, a lot of other countries, have only moved out their diplomats. Yeah. The, the UK still yes. has citizens, almost, yes. what, 4,000 yes, citizens yes. stuck yes. there? So when we say these things, there's always needed a measure of, um, we need to temper these things when we're sort of you know, having our expectations. Attacking because them, yeah. you kind of have to look at what your government is doing at home to rate what they will do abroad. Mm -hmm. sure. Then you now get stuck and you're like, eh, we don't have money. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> like, just, I mean, don't even go far. Just stay in the okay. environs of Lagos, like, island, and ask how many people don't have money. <laughs> and you'll know that, like, I mean, come on. You know? So, <laughs> and you know, and then you're like, where are money? And like, mm. um, yeah, you, um, like, there's so many things I want to say, but I'm just going to try and hold myself back. I'm trying to really rein myself in. But the fact is, you, why all of a sudden, do you have massive expectations? I mean, I don't understand, first and foremost, if the drivers were not paid, why start the yeah. bus? That's my question. Yeah. Why Actually. move halfway yeah. and leave them? But we don't have, I mean, all the details. Yeah. It's just what we have of yeah. the story. But for me, the main thing here is the evacuation of people in, in war zones, war zones and yeah. things like that is, is hugely, hugely problematic. Yeah. that you have to keep people safe, you have to stop you know, one side from trying to shoot them to claim the other side did it. And this is a very tense situation. We must remember that the two factions that are fighting, mm. they are military, no both way. sides. This yeah. is not a civilian versus yeah. government. Yeah. This is not small, small guys. This is full-on guy. You and I, we have AK-47 galore. Yeah. These are generals. Mm. So... It is not a situation where you just think, ah, eh, I can just run to one corner. This is calculated military training, fighting each other back and forth. So this is the elephants fighting, yeah. and, the and the grass is trying to get out of yeah, the way. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, it really, for me, is, look, we sometimes just have to say, look, Nigerian government, you've even kicked into action. Because mm. we must applaud. They've even done something. They've started something, <laughs> and let's wait to see where it will go. But, I mean, Nigerians, we need to arrange our expectations. Mm. I mean, reality is in front of you, mm -hmm. and you still have high expectations. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Who tells what, you you rather, rather, <laughs> what would you rather they do, actually? Because, I mean, we are Nigerians, and we have a government, whether good or bad. Ideally, the government is... So, I mean... For God's sake, they're supposed they to be responsible for our safety. My point is, look, we we don't ever think now. Like I said, UK citizens are still there. Yeah. yeah, we never think to stop and say, how much or how does how long does it take to plan an evacuation? An evacuation. Mm. You know, all we see is money has been paid. It's not about paying money. Mm. There is a plan. There is planning. There is actually executing what it takes to execute. Then execute, having it go well. All of these things are part of the planning. Those countries, countries, I don't want to say countries that are countries, but <laughs> countries rehearse these things yeah. in their different embassies yeah. so that when, when it happens, happens yeah. they yeah. have an yeah. idea, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know what the situation is in Nigeria. I don't know if we do that. Yeah. But we people. must first of all understand <laughs> that this thing is, it's not like saying, oh, uh, dummy got lost in Sudan, we're just going we're to go to pick her up. Her. No. Mm. Between you and finding Dami, there are soldiers, there are guns, there are bullets. People, by the way, are dying. Mm. And then we think that we're just, I mean, I think the first thing I saw about the evacuation was that Airpiece was going to fly a plane mm. in there. Yeah. I'm like, you think Airpiece is flying from here to any good, they'll just land. But everybody, <laughs> that's yes, on, yes, on, yes, on, yes, on. So there is a whole logistics and planning that goes into kicking something like this off. And when you don't plan well and you rush it, mm. ergo, we are stuck in the desert, entitled. <laughs> okay, so do we really believe that those drivers were not paid and that was why they stopped in the middle of the Sahara? Okay, let me now I don't play, believe that. Let me play devil's advocate. Okay, again, because we like sensation. Mm -hmm. that's, that's on the flip side. It is possible, you know, I had mentioned something like, it's possible the drivers are locals. Now, mm -hmm. in the event that this kind of thing happens, you want to use locals yeah. because they probably know back roads, mm -hmm. they, they understand the language. They, so what if, if they, somebody had called them to say, listen, you need to stay put for now. You can't move mm -hmm. because this place is blocked or that. Again, like Uti said, we don't have all the facts. 
So when somebody comes on social media mm. and then says something, that's what everybody runs with. <laughs> now, we don't know the reason yes, why sir. what if because they get sprayed and they shoot them and they all die in the process of no dear you know well let me say something so if that was the situation i strongly believe that the drivers would have said something to them and mm. not just leave them stranded. taking shield they, or something. they would have informed mm. them i mean you're transporting people somewhere right mm. now what he was saying oh what we hear is money all we hear is money of course what we hear is money because mm. you cannot tell me that you are saying we need 1.2 million dollars to evacuate nigerian citizens mm -hmm. from sudan and then at the end of the year providing first you're providing only 10 buses so in my head i've played what the scenario was like so uh said they need 10 buses. they need buses to take out these people from mm -hmm. from khatum mm -hmm. okay ah said will say ah baba how many are they one well, mama needs i'm not worry we we'll give them now. 10 buses my wife. okay mm -hmm. then 10 buses get there and then people fill up the bus and he calls back say, Ten buses, yeah, it's not enough. Oh, I said, give them five more. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you already told us. So what even? So that's my that's that's my grievance now. Um, I understand that these people might have been a bit entitled because really, whose business is, is it if your money has finished or if you don't have water, drink, and all of that, right? But now my question is, why do we come out and say, oh, we're using X Y Z amount, and then we don't eventually get what it is that the money has been collected? Okay, so what if there was, was a deal? Mm -hmm. What if there was one. even a deal? And then the other drivers or the other company says, you know what, this is a risk we can't afford to take. What if? Chances I was just that going to say that this what situation if? is in yeah, flux. It's flux. Yeah, it's flux. Like I said, this, this, is, not, this, is, mm -hmm. this is a war zone. Yeah. Best blade plans still go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, then, you could have paid the company yeah. and then today the company is blown up. Yeah. Or tomorrow the dri one driver gets shot and the rest <laughs> yeah. of the driver says, you know what, <laughs> I'm not going like, to do this because no, so the hazard is high yeah. and I'm not afraid of it. afraid of reprisals because they live there. I understand. Oh, yeah. But this also now boils down to Nigerian prioritizing citizens. Yeah. It did like China to the tune of 1.2 million dollars. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what China did, I mean, right? And 400 citizens, please do the math. My math is a little off right now. Mm. 1.2 million divided, divided by 400 by, that's is about what? 300,000. Thank you. Is that not enough prioritization? <laughs> <laughs> like, we like to the yeah, in no, yes, no, they, they could have made other, Like really you rightly said, they could have made other plans. Mm. Other countries are evacuating their citizens through the Navy. Right? They're using mm -hmm. the Navy so that they can use the waterways to get out of there. But... First of all, we don't even have a national carrier as a country. Don't we don't. <laughs> no, no. We actually do. But okay, so what so if APs did not volunteer to say, okay, well, let's what would have happened? My, my, my airline. There are a great many countries <laughs> that don't have a national carrier. Mm -hmm. Again, focus on your focus. Your problems in Nigeria today do not involve a national carrier. Let's no. not deviate. <laughs> True, <Trusha>. sir. <laughs> Literally. Hey. I mean, no, like I said again, man. this is not a holiday destination. This, mm. Like, yeah. hey, this is not just going to go, hey, mm. the people that are uh, evacuating their, their, their um, citizens, citizens. they're doing them with the military planes and chinook helicopters. They're not doing them with, here is a 747 <laughs> or here. Like, no, guys. No, no. 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 Everybody no. enter. That's, I I yeah. 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 That's, That's what I'm cool. saying. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That Look at what China has done. Look at what Japan has done. They've brought in their navy. They've brought in their soldiers. What has Nigeria done anything like that, Uti? No, we've only you. sent buses out. But I just buses. said to you mm. that planning yeah. is not our yeah. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're not proactive. Mm. We're always reacting. Well, yeah, actually. exactly. That's that's one of the yeah. problems of Nigeria. We don't have proactiveness does not exist with us. Because number one, that well, personally, I think this kind of thing is number one it's a security in fact that they, they are even being evacuated mm. it, it requires strict security you shouldn't be i mean doing social media taking videos shooting and out shooting it out to the world and all that and then why would they even just put citizens by themselves inside a boat like it doesn't make so there's any so there's sense. There are many moving parts yes it, I, I don't think it makes so enough unless sense. you have the full story you we we probably can't, can't even say. exactly we can't particularly i mean forget say. the people that are saying they don't have water mm -hmm. they don't have money mm -hmm. that's them just being entitled i mean mm -hmm. just that sense of entitlement when the real sense of it why like you rightly mm -hmm. said why are you just putting citizens mm -hmm. in it? because you don't even know which driving them interest my point yeah. which is the fact that the planning yeah doesn't seem to be yeah up to 
up to it point. It was just right? the rushed thing. As I mean, yeah. Where our dead Chinelo started from was that they paid 1.2 million. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was the part that was about me. money. So, <laughs> because, how much are we going to pay? Who are we going to pay? Mm. Then the question is, or perhaps the question we forgot to ask is, what is the plan and what are yeah. the contingencies? These mm. are the things that are My thing is that I know that there is no contingency mm. and there's no plan. Mm. You just come out and then you just call that money. Mm. because you feel like you can and yes everybody just wants to sit back and accept that mm. this Nigerian is the amount of money that always take cost. advantage of every problem that's lose. my pain there's always there's always the advantage checking well, just taking advantage I mean, of money mm. they, they don't I, think I, of, I, mm. nigerian government don't have the interest of their citizens at, i don't think that nigerian government has the interest of the citizens at heart mm. if i'm being very honest because i don't this entire situation could have gone in a different way this entire situation of trying to evacuate people would have gone in a better way very frankly, rather than just putting people in a bus and saying, okay, well, drive them to Cairo. It doesn't make any literal sense because how are you even sure that the people that are driving them are not going to take them to somewhere else where they can be kidnapped? How are you sure they're not even going to kidnap them? <laughs> and then the next news you are going to hear is that, oh, so I'm um, so so and so number of Nigerians were kidnapped on, on their the way to yeah, Cairo. I mean, <laughs> you know, these things happen and it doesn't make any sense because like you rightly said, better planning could have been put in mm. place mm. for this thing to make sense. But right now it doesn't make any sense. All we're just hearing is one big figure, 1.2 million um, dollars. And I'm like, so where has the money gone into? What have it's you guys buses. used it to do? I mean, if we have seen the work that has been done and it still doesn't go as we want it to go. I mean, we know we can have our consolation in the fact that, oh, okay, well, I mean, we tried. But in this case, we're not even trying. Mm. We're not even trying to try. Mm. So how can we, I mean, so how can we not praise our efforts when we're not even trying? Okay. Mm. I mean, I like the angle that we started this mm. conversation from. And I can't wait mm. to see what I want to see. Mm. Before I see what I want to see, <laughs> let's take a break. <laughs> I'm really loving the turnout of this conversation. And if you just tuned in to our ladies' night out and we're discussing the war in Sudan, the safety and evacuation of Nigerians, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081803 You could also tweet to us at Wayshow Africa with the hashtag Wayshow. Also, our phone line is now open. Please call us on 0702500749. Call us on 070. 2500 Please also remember to turn down the volume of the devices it is that you're calling us from so that we can hear you and you can hear us as well. So I was going to say, mm -hmm. now let's look at this from the angle of these people that are jack buying because the truth is that anything can happen in any country at any damn time, yeah. right? So are people, the question now is, are Nigerians considering, are they, are they putting these security concerns into consideration when they want to jack buy? If you were, you want to go to Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> a country, a country that you had, had, this, had a yes, yes, for thirty yes, years, yes. had a coup in yes, twenty nineteen, yes, has yes, had military yes. power it's for two yes. years. It's, it's if, like you it, country, if you really. took it, mm. that would not have been the country that sure. you went to. Right? Sudan right. has been like this for a for very long, long time. For the longest for a long period. Time. So I'm not asking. So who are the people that have been going to these countries? Who are the people that how how it how is it that you know that a country is war torn and then you still want to go there? You want to get a good medical certificate? Ah, okay, we have a caller by the way. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Suleiman from Bauchi. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. I don't. I don't. It's very so. I was so sad. In the sense that everything uh, in this country. Is to condemn our government, even when they are trying to do things. Sudan, you see, the situation in Sudan is worse. short. Even America, Britain, Saudi Arabia, having problems, they are quitting their their people. America has a naval base there. Saudi Arabia, at the same. And France. So Nigeria taking the taking to the road is the best thing for her to. There is no way you can land a military aircraft in Sudan. So please, we should learn to appreciate our government. Yeah, this is right. Nobody is nobody was prepared for the war. Thank you.
Thank you very much, mm -hmm. See, I, yeah. I the whole heartedly yeah. agree with allies. You. Yes, exactly. Whole heartedly. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the thing. Absolutely. Whole heartedly Absolutely. agree with Suleiman. Absolutely. Mm. But what? You can't take a no. option if mm. you don't have that kind of relationship with that country. No, but that was why the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, mm. Judge, um, Jeffrey Oyema, said at first, right, that he was waiting for authorization and he was asking that they first create a safe corridor before he goes ahead to ask that the, the students are then evacuated, right? I mean, I understand that. But was that safe corridor going to be remotely possible anyway? <laughs> no, I mean, no, it's natural in, in war zones mm, for yeah. those kinds of things to be done. And I mean, evacuations are not usually done in singularities. They're yeah. usually yes. done yeah. um, yes. as, as uh, most of the now, collaborative, collaborative yes. efforts, yes. right? Um, and, and countries who generally have agreements and things like that, or, you know, work together to get their citizens out. So... Uh, again, like I said, the fact that we've even paid the money, like the money has come, and this thing started, what, on the 15th? Yeah. I yeah. mean, the fact that we've paid money and we've made some efforts it's is something. commendable. It's something. Okay. Um, the planning for me is, like, we don't know what, went, what has gone wrong. And, of course, like they said, this is a situation that's in flux. But if we come back to what you were saying about um, the, the decisions that people are making, we're mm. in the midst of a full-on jackpa. I mean, this is... The, the yeah. trending thing right now is, is Jaffa. Jaffa. Like, is Jaffa. The question is, uh, you're still here. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I don't think that those kinds of things come into people's minds when people are leaving. Because mm. people just think, I just want to get out, I just mm. want to get mm. out. The, the two things that I take predominantly from this situation and what I think that our viewers should think about when they have these conversations, for me personally, is, yes, powerful question, where you are going somewhere? Please think about it. If anything happens, yeah. are you, you going to, to rely yeah. on your yeah. government mm. or are you going to have a plan B? Mm. Mm. The second thing is, war is not a thing to be trivialized mm. and yeah. to be taken. Like, so you can see that as bad as Nigerians like to say Nigeria is, it has kicked off somewhere now. They're running back to Nigeria. Mm. Please let us be peaceful in this, our land. Because what was the... What was the source of this problem? Transition of power. Mm -hmm. They're having the same issues we've had in the past, the transition from military rule to, to democracy, yeah. and not mm -hmm. being able to have those conversations flow mm -hmm. um, effectively yeah. to the desired end point. So peace is not highly overrated. Mm. We like it, you know, as Nigerians, mm. we're all waiting for Owambe Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Friday. Mm. let's, you know, <laughs> just, just, just in some context mm. so that we appreciate our realities before mm. we go back to the people in the desert. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely agree with um, Ute. Mm -hmm. I mean, peace, peace. We can't even say it enough. Mm. And like you rightly said, I mean, we can look at Ukraine, South Africa. I mean, everybody wants to come back home. And everybody now gets angry when they feel the government is not doing something to help them come back home. But if we burn our nation, so where do we come back to? So it, it becomes pertinent, it becomes imperative that we must do all that we can to make sure this country does not burn. So at least, even if you jackpot, wherever, you have a home to come back to. For me, I feel like the reason why people want to come back to Nigeria after the Jack mm. is because the freedom that they can get in this Nigeria, they can't get it anywhere. No, but they can go somewhere else now. They can go they somewhere can else. This freedom that we have in this there Nigeria, is, it's not you can't get it anywhere. Hey, look, you're, not, you're calling it freedom. It's not freedom. There is a way of life in the world, actually. Yeah, 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 still spinning yeah. it in a negative context. <laughs> First and foremost, mm. Dorothy got it right in The mm. Wizard of Oz. There is no place <laughs> like no home. No place. Sure. Look, no place. right? No place like Say home. what you will. Mm. In Nigeria, you are on your terra firma, your own part yeah. of the world. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Nobody can take that from you. Yeah. Sure. Right? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. literally, two weeks before we got back, my son was like, Mommy, I'm ready to go home. Like, my family, no, 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 no. I'm ready to go home. And I, like, I got it. I have, I, and everybody mm. that knows me knows that Nigeria is at the center of my DNA. Mm. I love this country. I'm here. We are here. But the fact is, we forget. When we're here, we take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Then when you are out there, you realize that, you know what, you go through the experiences, you go through the realities, and you realize, I actually miss Nigeria. home. Yeah. And when I think back to when we had, I think it was circa 2007, 2008, when we had the whole IJGB, everybody was coming home. Mm -hmm. The fact is, if this country was rocking, 
Nigerians will not mm. go. I, I think I said it earlier. We yeah. would sit here and we would be happy because I'm telling you, small chops and amala is big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like what? <laughs> <laughs> it is actually it's a very it's beautiful it's country. Well, I'm a fan of Nigeria. Yeah, I yeah. would like to live yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. I mean, I like to travel the world, but I would definitely mm. like to live in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Nigeria is such a beautiful place. I know, right? Honestly, <laughs> okay. It's not our so government we, that is just doing us. Why you? Loman from Avia. Hello, Loman. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Okay. Good evening. Hello. Um, today's topic uh, an evacuation. Yes, I like what I'm um, hearing or uh, what we are saying that the Nigerian government is about to or they are doing in evacuating this. But what is paining me? Uh, these people are they coming back to so where our education system is not working. Are they coming now? When they come back, what are they going to do? Uh, uh, tomorrow, Asu will go strike. Right? You tell me that I should be happy. Why these people? Even please, I would like you sisters after now to let me know what is this after in my own language as an evil man. I don't know what is Jaka. So you let me know about it, but what I'm just saying is that these people coming back now, will they still go back to complete their education? Because our democracy is not working. I never have destroyed our democracy. We come to education, education minister, and the labor minister, they are not doing well. Everything in this country just going from up to down. So, and if people are coming back, you are happy that you're coming no places like home. And as you're coming back, you're coming back to meet with good government. You're coming back to meet with good education. You're coming back to meet with good road infrastructure. You're coming back to meet with a good health care. Oh, come on. That somebody will be happy to come back home. But when you come back, you will now start back to start from square one. So that is where the problem is. But I pray that when the war, God, God will help the world to finish to uh, get, uh, let them be teaching in Sudan so that they will go back and finish education. Otherwise, they will remain here in Nigeria. No education, no nothing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Norman. Actually, I agree with what he said. I mm. agree with what he said completely because, truth, like you said just a few minutes mm. ago, if Nigeria was a very, very if, you, if Nigeria was a working place, mm. a lot of people would not be out of this country. A lot of Nigerians would not be out of this country. A lot of Nigerians would be here. It's just a very sad reality. It's just like. Let me give a practical example. Maybe your living condition where you are living, your house is mm. not particularly great. And then, you know, maybe you just get bored or you're just, whatever reason, Sha, you want to leave. You go on maybe holiday to your friend's place. At some point, your house will be calling you. Even if the living condition is not so great, your you house will be home. called, you want to go home. Then when you now get to the house, you now remember why you actually left in the very first instance. Mm. So it's just a very sad reality that we are in currently as Nigerians. Because you can't expect me to go to UK to go and study, for instance. And maybe no matter how difficult it was when I was there, I mean, point is I had a very great education there because they have a very good educational system. And then I come back to Nigeria and nothing is really working. I love that I'm back home, but I'm sad about what is happening. Do you get it's, it's so annoying. It's really, so I really agree with what he said. It's really annoying. And honestly, the Nigerian government can actually do better. No, sorry, let me just give it's you a better for all of us. I don't know how much education in Sudan is. Mm. Circa on average, uni in, mm. in, in the UK is about 12,000 pounds, give or take. If you go to the US, you are talking 60,000, 70,000 mm -hmm. dollars. How much is your federal university here? Mm. How much is your state university here? Yeah. You know, look, value for money, you get what you pay exactly. for. Mm. <laughs> so, exactly. when you are paying, how much is it? You are paying? And then you want whistles and bells right. and all the rest. Okay. I mean, we come on. Too. And we will still riot that it's too much. Come on. Exactly. So that's my point. This sense of entitlement that we think that everything is going to pay really, for everything. Really. In places where things work, people pay. pay. True. I mean, Americans okay. spend years. Yes. So are we really ready? Pay. So are we ready to be yes, good, to have good government? So you see, this mm. thing is a cycle. Yeah. yeah. True. True. I mean, I get you. I hear you, Uti, when you say how much are we paying. But then, how, even with the amount of money that, or rather how cheap and affordable it is, how many people can actually afford it? You See, in America, people can't afford to go to university. People cannot. Let's be clear, right? 
that people cannot afford. If we were having a conversation about primary education mm. or secondary okay. education, you could take me on. But you see, university? Eh, no, no, no. It's expensive. Mm. Well, mm. but shouldn't we have learned from the time of Ukraine? Because that time when they had that problem as well, mm. the, um, students had to be back. I know people who were studying medicine in Ukraine and then mm -hmm. had to come back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And it's been almost for two years now and they haven't gone back to school. Mm. They're just confused. They don't know what to what do. To they do. should yeah. have to go and write jam again. Or if, I have about two or three friends who are entirely confused now about the next step to take. And it's very depressing mm -hmm. for them. So, you see, this thing now still boils back to... We said we shouldn't condemn our government. It's not condemning. It is just proper planning and asking for the bare minimum. What plans have been put in place? Okay, fine. We need to have contingency plans. Now, that's the thing I've seen. We don't have contingency plans in this country. We don't. So, what happens... Okay, I was talking to you about policies, and you said there are policies, but these policies are not implemented. Yes, because I want to believe that there's a policy about evacuation and what should happen to the people the when you bring them that is the problem. back to the country. What's supposed to happen? Isn't there a process? Isn't there? So when they la what is supposed to happen? It's like during COVID. We knew what and what needed to be done per time, right? So if somebody... That's the same thing. So why is it that there is no plan? We say don't blame the government. Don't you are talking about the government. I understand. But then, is the government really doing what they are supposed to be doing? In but the, the process place. has started. Like, can the you have you know, you know, your expectations? <laughs> the process has started. Not have you your know, expectations a long time ago, and nothing keeps happening. I think we have a call. Anyway, I think we have a call. Hi, Austin. Austin from Benin. Hello, Austin. Oh, we lost Austin. Okay. Hi, Austin. Good evening. Oh, okay. We've lost him. All right. So I was saying that the mm. thing is that we don't make proper plans, right? Mm. Mm. I'm still saying our expectation, expectation we need to lower. Why are we lowering our expectations for a government that's supposed to be working for us? Mm. Again, allow me to reiterate <laughs> that there are 4,000 UK citizens still in Sudan. Uti, but, but I can't bet you know that they are going to come uh, for them. That then? Britain will do something Your about it. Your people are coming for them. Is it not? Eh? Did they pay for the bus? Are they really coming? I think Austin is back now. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Austin. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Please good evening. evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Yeah, good evening, Austin. Please go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, so the question is, what kind of education is there in Sudan that we don't have in Nigeria? I mean... Uh, do they have the, the I mean the, the universities they have there? Don't we have the same universities in Nigeria? Uh, I mean, what, what are they studying there? I, I mean, Nigerians. You see, the problem is we expect too much. We have too much in this country, and we don't. We have a lot of universities in this country. Okay, even if you are going to study Islamic studies, for instance. Don't we have universities in Nigeria here where they do uh, such courses? I mean, just ask yourself, what, what, what university in Sudan, when we have so many state and federal universities in Nigeria, are even cheaper, and they get the same uh, education? And I want to commend my sister on the, on the left for being objective in your analysis. <laughs> you know, the truth, the truth is that we, we, we ask for too much. We are looking for too much. Nigerians are looking for too much. <laughs> I don't know what our problem is. And then somebody just called from Abana and saying, oh, Nigeria is this and that and that and that. That's not true. Mm. That's not true. You can't be running down your country like that. Mm. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very Why much. We're looking for too much in the real sense of it. Oh, we're just as as looking for what is right. See, don't let me. I think... Don't let me. <laughs> I mean. How much do you pay in taxes? <laughs> If we have to go comment, please, <laughs> please, please, comment, please, please. Take please. A comment. Because Uti, this stage that Uti <laughs> was starting, Uti will break <laughs> it. Please don't break the table that standing on. Diola, please, your comment. Okay, so this says, um, to me, the crisis has already taken place in Nigeria. Sorry, um, to me, the crisis has already taken place. In Nigeria, government, in, the Nigerian government's part to rescue them, which is $1.2 million, was earmarked for it. Every opportunity, whether in crisis or for good, government officials want to loot and no accountability and investigation. I can bet you they will go scot free. Hmm. Hmm. It's you. We have a comment. So this says India and Britain have the largest population of people jackpying from their country to the US mm -hmm. and Dubai. Okay, it doesn't really give context, but it says we have three million Nigerians living in Sudan. How do we evacuate them all? 
Wow, three million. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Three million. Are you serious? Yeah, wow. that's a lot. Oh. Okay, Dami. Um, sorry. At average, I, I was sure doing the math. Uh, what is it? Three thousand mm. dollars per person, mm -hmm. and for that one point two million, so times it by three million. Mm -hmm. yeah, all of you start. Let's just shut down this country. <laughs> <laughs> we found out that they said it is that we're owing you. Eight thousand two hundred and ninety-seven naira. You want to add this one to my BC? I beg no. no. All right. Um, to me, the crisis has already taken place. Um, is Nigerian government part of? Is Nigerian government part to res? Is Nigerian government part to rescue them? Which one point two million dollars was embarked for it? Embarked for it. Every opportunity, whether in crisis or for good, government officials want to loot. No, and no accountability and investigation. I can bet you they will go scot free. I think that was the same yeah, comment. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, let me just take a second one then. Good evening, ladies. Please, I was in Sudan 2008. That country is poor. We should educate ourselves and fix our educational sector. Thanks, Ayo from Joss. Thank you very much, Ayo. Thank you so much for this comment. You see, this is what I'm saying. Mm. Instead of us saying, oh, let's applaud this, let's applaud this. Place. The thing is, let's tell them to also fix what it is that they want to fix. Because the truth is that if our educational sector was working the way it should be working, do you think people really want to go to Sudan? Do you think people really want to go but to... But there are products of this same education system that are doing so well at global level. Have you heard how many people have registered for JAM this year? Okay. Over, I think about 2 million people. Do you know how many people are going to get admission to universities this year? Mm. So, no, sorry. Where in the world does it say that that you applied for university means, means that you will get, get it. No, but see, I'm just trying to say that. I mean, we're not talking handle. about primary or secondary school here. Again, look, education how many universities actually. do you have? Mm. Well, true. What is the average intake in a university? I mean, look, let's try and focus on our focus. <laughs> Literally, mm. right? Mm. It is this sense that everybody will do something mm. or the numbers that we're growing, there is a reason why university education, go and look at the history even in America. Why did, why did university education become mainstream in America? America was trying to compete with Russia to go to the moon, yeah. mm. right? To, mm -hmm. send, to send a satellite Not into space. Mm -hmm. And they started to make education affordable. Yeah. Today, the Americans that go to university are dying under the weight of the debt yeah. that mm. they are in yeah. to get that education. Well, you're right. University education is not for everybody. Yeah. A well-rounded education system involves educa um, primary, university primary, education, yeah. involves vocation. No, let me talk about vocation. vocation. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 vocational because these um these experiences are designed to fill gaps in yeah, you know the workforce yeah. in the nation yeah, and what is needed so the fact that you are now saying to me that two million people want to go to university where are the jobs for the two million people to go into when they graduate mm. Mm. we are saying the same thing we are yeah, the yeah, just calling out the government to say them them because because something, something, they something, also something. need to do better they need to nobody create nobody is saying that they don't need to do better okay. but i am saying that we also need to understand that our our expectations are skewed. Mm. We need to sort of mm. broaden our horizon and say, you know what, what is happening? If we pump out two million mm. graduates today, where are you going to put them? There'll be a lot of unemployment. We have it. Yeah, yeah, true. Is it the banks? Mm. Is it the telcos? How many? I think the question should be, how do we create more employment, employment. opportunities? Yeah. Stimulate the economy. Get Vocational, these people realizing yeah, that yeah. there's so many things that yeah. you can do. I mean, these people have... Countries that have proper vocational systems, yeah. people can. I mean, there are countries in the world today that are looking yes. for carpenters, looking uh, for plumbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. well yeah. yeah. And people are not thinking, I don't want to aspire to be a plumber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, see, doesn't that come back to the government? How many vocational colleges do we have? Vocational schools uh, do we have here? So, you can, whatever you want to piggyback, you know, it's like the devil can blame for everything. <laughs> you can piggyback and still come back to the government. Everything is the government's fault. Mm, we've heard. Face your phone. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me take this last comment. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what I say in hashtag. Where is one in Sudan safety and evacuation? Like my dear beautiful sister Dami said, if our educational system is good here in Nigeria, why do people have to go abroad? People relocate abroad because our educational system is bad and it's an eyesore. The question is, our is our government willing to deliver well? He who fails to plan, plans to fail. For crying out loud, what is so special about universities in Sudan? Mm -hmm. If we had good universities here in Nigeria, 
My dear beautiful sister Uti made mention of getting what we pay for. I agree. I'm so happy and excited having Uti back in the studio. I think that I missed you as an understatement. My name is Daniel. You always regular. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel. Okay, I mean, I, I think this conversation has been a, a very yeah. interesting so one. one. You know, we looked at it from different angles. Yeah. Clearly, Uti is not having this blame no, in the no, government. She's not having this blame in the government. Okay, thank you for joining us tonight. But before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. They are still in Khartoum, and Nema Nigeria has sorted all payments, etc. But there are still a few log logistical delays. They will likely proceed early morning, safer to leave early morning because the worst situation is not a normal situation. And we're all anxiously waiting to receive them. And this was by the chairperson of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabirewa. All right, so see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.